Hey guys, how's it going? So today we're gonna to work on a little bit of fruit harvesting. I wanna show you how the raspberries are doing over here. Well, all the berries and grapes. Uh, we've got some strawberries to pick, some more nectarines to pick, and then I've got something really fun to put in the Hartley. So Aaron and I went on a date day yesterday. We picked out a few trees for the large grass area, some shade trees, and I picked up a little tabletop fountain to tuck in on the counter in the Hartley for a little bit of that water noise. It's not gonna take up any floor space though. That was kind of important to me. I would rather take up floor space with more um, either bigger plants or some kind of a table or something to set plants on. So here we are in the berry area. We've got the row of heritage raspberries here. This is an everbearing type loaded with fruit. I think I'm gonna have to do some thinning this next year. This is only their second year in the ground. And look at these plants. They look really good and so much fruit, but you look in the inside and they're pretty, they're, oh, I don't know, a lot of dead leaves and stuff. Uh, so they're gonna need a clean out and some thinning, but my word, look at all of these berries. Isn't that awesome? I mean, just loaded. And then over here in the second row, we have the fall gold variety, which these look gorgeous. This is how you want them to look right here. Oh my goodness. This is my favorite kind of raspberry, like hands down. Higher sugar content. They just kind of melt in your mouth. I love them. We still don't have a full row. They're about half row. This spring we did a lot of digging up suckers that were coming out from underneath the berry beds. We dig them up and plant them. Um, a few were planted when it was starting to get pretty hot and I thought for sure the roots would still hang on, but I think, I don't know, we'll give them some time. The tops are, are dead for sure, but raspberries are pretty aggressive. So I think we'll fill up this bed pretty quickly. So you can see here, I started off last year with like what, two or three plants right here at the very end and all of the rest of them are from suckers. So we, you know, dug up suckers, planted them, dug up more suckers this spring, planted them. And these are already starting to sucker just themselves right there. Um, so we have half more of this bed to fill up. And then in this last row, we have blackberries. And the blackberries were just planted this year. So it's the second year for the heritage raspberries and part of the fall golds. And then first year for some of the fall golds and the blackberries. We had some struggles with water over here, but they all look like this spurge right here. Oh, jeez. Let me get this out this is distracting me there we go so yeah we've had a little bit of struggles with water you can see like this is the original stem let me not shade it here let me get to this side that's the original stem there that it came with it kind of crisped up and dried up but they've produced new branches so the branch it came with like the tips of it kind of dried up i just need to come in here and prune i've already harvested quite a number of berries off of these but you can see that some of these new branches are already forming more berries so we might get a late harvest these two have struggled the most for sure but you can see they've already produced a whole bunch of new growth and these are going like crazy look at this my goodness cannot wait for next year to see what kind of production we can get um, today i might just take a little time to kind of you know help these get up in their actual where they need to be not spread out all over the ground i'm going to try to keep everything inside of our system here. And these beds, you guys, are 30 feet long, three feet wide on the interior. So from the inside of that board to the inside of this board, three feet. We filled it up with the Espoma raised bed mix. Just a nice lofty blend of uh, soil here. Ooh, I'm feeling the moisture right here. We've got the drip tube running right alongside the plants there. So these are all watered by drip. You can see the system a little bit more in that bed. So it just comes up in one area. And then we did two rows that go alongside all the plants here in all of these beds and they all run on the same system. And then between the beds, we left eight feet. I think it was eight feet, which you can see when the fall golds reach their maturity and the heritage are kind of like hanging out and they just do that every year, no matter how hard you try to get them in, you know, up in there. We needed eight feet in order to still have a walking path once these berries are full grown. And I assume we're gonna be dealing with the same exact thing over here once all of these start to fill in and really start growing up. And right behind, we've got our grapes, which these are the Niagara. These are the white seedless grapes, uh, which Mateo sent us out from Philadelphia. You guys shipped all the way. Can you believe that? They are doing so phenomenally well. I'll probably do a separate video just about grape uh, training because you can see I need to do that. I don't plan on doing that today. And then these are the Suffolk Red, which are a red seedless. 
and these I thought died. I planted them. They didn't look like much when I planted them, but then they started to leaf out and they looked so good. And then we had a cold snap and it killed all of the new leaves. And I thought for sure the plants were gone because they sat there for a really long time. I just kind of ignored it because I didn't have any other like access to any other grape plants. So I thought, well, I'll just leave them there and then replace them eventually when I can get my hands on some, some more plants. And then they miraculously like sprung forth like weeks and weeks and weeks after that cold snap. And they've really put on a lot of growth. So I'm very encouraged, very encouraged. I'm loving it and they look good. I thought that maybe they were showing some signs of chlorosis earlier on, but I, I must've been dreaming because they look really healthy, nice green color, no, no issues that I can see at all. But this right here, this is what we're gonna focus on for now. So when we planted these raspberries out and the blackberries, we did the raised bed mix first, and then I did biotone starter fertilizer in it. We planted everything and then we top dressed with the land and sea compost. So that was last year. This year we came in and did berry tone and I only did it one time, you guys, one time. And I did run an experiment where I mowed down because both of these varieties are ever bearing. So you can treat them two different ways. And we'll link the video down below because I'm not gonna go into length about how to do it in this video, uh, but you can watch that one if you want to learn. But you can treat them as an everbearing where you prune them a specific way to where they still will bear fruit in June, or you can treat them as a one crop plant and make the pruning a lot easier on yourselves and mow them all the way to back down. And that way you get a late harvest, but it's usually a huge big bumper crop. So I did it kind of both ways and I didn't really get a ton. Maybe it's just because it was their second growing season. I might try it again this year. But I don't really think it was worth it treating them as an everbearing. I think it was more worth it on the other ones where I just mowed them down and let them grow fresh from the ground. And I'm enjoying a huge crop right now on those fresh, on the fresh canes. Okay, so this is what it's gonna look like for a little while, just me in this bowl and a bunch of berries. Here we go. <laughs> you guys now clearly I did not get as many fall golds I did eat a bunch when I was picking them but there just wasn't as many and then quite a number of heritage so I didn't strip these completely clean there are some berries that are past their prime and we're just gonna leave those for the birds uh, but I also left a whole bunch along the base of the plants because that's at Benjamin and Samantha level and they can come along and harvest and eat them when we're out walking in the evenings and throughout the day uh, they love to come out here and harvest things so you'll see several of these clumps along the way as you move down the whole length of the row. Now, a lot of the berries were nice, but some of them were a little crumbly. I don't know if you guys have ever experienced that, having your berries kind of crumble apart in your hands as you pick them, which can be a little bit frustrating um, when you've waited all season for them. And I'm thankful that not a lot of ours did that today, um, but the most common cause for that is poor pollination uh, and extreme temperatures. So if it's either too cold or too hot, when they're blooming, that can cause them to do that. There are some other things like some viral things. I don't think that's what I've got going on here. Um, uh, spider mites can be another cause. Now I don't see any spider mite, which is, is crazy. I can't believe I don't see any spider mite activity on these plants. Maybe they're all hiding from me right now, but I don't see any spider mite damage, but that can cause it as well. So it's weird. Like I would have one clump where like, they're just like little small misshapen and then they just crumble apart. Like these are past their prime anyway, but they just crumble apart when you pick them. No good. You know, any kind of stressor can do weird things to your plants too. And I know that mine are way too thick. Um, and I think if I allow them more light and air circulation on each one of the canes, that will be a lot of help as well. So we'll need to keep that in mind when we clean this bed out uh, this next spring or fall. I don't know when we're gonna clean them out, but we'll see. That clump is at Benjamin level right there. So fun. My goal was to get enough for a batch of raspberry jam, just one. So that's perfect right there. I've got one more bowl. We'll go grab our strawberries in here and then just a few nectarines. Overall though, I'd have to say that these raspberries are really doing well. 
I mean, can't complain. Second year plants here, my word. Oh, look at this grass, it's just coming in beautifully. Here are our strawberries. And I was noticing the other night, it seemed like we had a lot in here. Look at that, my goodness. That one got stepped on, it looks like. Okay, so we're gonna see what we can find in our strawberry row, then we'll move back to the orchard. Benjamin. Hey Benjamin, come here. Look at this. Are those Joe's glasses? Uh, yeah. Well Daddy said oh he said I can have them. That was so bright. It was so bright. Well that was nice. Okay, here's the nectarine tree. And we've just been picking these as they have been ripening. Let me check this one. Oh yeah. Try that. Oh, nice. Isn't that good? Very nice. You want one, bud? Or do you want more strawberries? I'll have more strawberries. Okay. <laughs> Joe's taking one for the team, <laughs> getting all wet. It. <laughs> it's two. Stop it. Oh, thank you. Are you enjoying those? We're not gonna have very many strawberries left here in a little bit. We had a pretty nice harvest though, you guys. Here are the red raspberries, strawberries, which, how many strawberries have you eaten so far, do you think? Uh, none. Oh, none, <laughs> that's baloney. Have you had like 10? I'm just having one right now. Yeah. <laughs> That's how he gets the stem off. Nice, dude. <laughs> and then here is our pick of nectarines today. These are the ones that felt really perfect. And there's still several on the tree. And then our full golds. So I'm going to take these inside and then we're going to go work in the Hartley a bit. Okay guys, I got all of the harvest delivered into the kitchen. So that's where it's gonna stay for the time being. And I hope to make one batch of raspberry jam with the red raspberries, maybe this evening or tomorrow. But we're gonna head out to the truck because I left the fountain out there last night. We'll get that and take it to the Hartley. You know what, I forgot to show you, I did pick a few big tomatoes while we were out there near them when we were getting strawberries. Now those for dinner tonight, at least a couple of them. There it is. Oh, you guys are gonna love it. Makes the perfect amount of sound. Isn't that perfect? Now, 
I thought I could keep it on this table. This, you guys, this console table is one that my mom and I picked up on an antiquing trip, but it's not like a super, super duper nice table. Like I don't feel bad treating it kind of rough and putting it in the sun because like it has cracks. It was starting to peel when I first got it. It had spots all over on it, which is kind of freeing in a way to have a pretty table that you don't have to be super duper careful with. However, I'm not going to purposely leave anything that splatters and I am seeing a little bit of splatter happening here. So I will find a new home for it in here. I initially thought it would look cute tucked in up here and I might just do that because this, you know, will just wipe right up. I also could tuck it in on the floor anywhere in here. It's just such a fun space to try new things out in. I picked a new arrangement for this table this morning. Used some raspberries and some red dahlias and some zinnias that had kind of the two colors here of the raspberries. Kind of a fun one and shorter than my last one so you could possibly see the other person on the other side of the table i love this it's kind of funny because it's a little bit rare for me to come upon a piece like this and think oh, i need to have that but that little band of copper around the outer bowl and the birds didn't even come with the fountain the fountain is just like the bowl part of it um, and the birds they had it displayed like that at franz woody when we were there yesterday had the birds sitting on top and i'm like i need that whole thing those birds are so sweet it makes the perfect sound of water it barely splatters uh, so it'll be perfect to be in the Hartley because I won't have to be filling it all the time. You know, a lot of bigger fountains, they lose water really quickly and you have to be filling them all the time. And I didn't want anything that would splatter really badly because that will create some issues that I don't want to be dealing with. I think Aaron just turned the tractor on. He's filling in the tree hole, you guys. So they came and popped the tree out that did not thrive. Kind of sad, but you know what? We've got fun plans for this area. See if he notices us staring at him. Oh, yep. <laughs> that tree was kind of the last step. We had to get that removed because the big truck had to come in and pick it up um, to remove the big root ball. We had to get that removed before we did any brick or stone work in this area because that truck would have just completely wrecked it. So Benny's supposed to be here this afternoon. We're gonna walk through the whole area around here and just reconfirm all the measurements, where the brick's gonna go, and then hopefully, we get that started because I feel that window closing in a little bit more and more every day as we get closer to fall and I really want to get the boxwoods in this year. <sighs> really badly, it'd be really nice. And what a relaxing afternoon, you guys. I was so excited to show you this fountain because I don't have anything like this around here. And I was excited to tuck some water sound into the Hartley, um, just a little bit of movement that way. Uh, and then harvesting is always fun. It's always fun to reap the reward of the effort you've put in. And then, you know, learn. We learn every single year. Sometimes you have a bang up year, like with the nectarines, the flavor top nectarines out there. Amazing this year, huge fruit, so sweet. No bugs, no issues, nothing, amazing amazing crop on that tree. And then, you know, you have things like the raspberries, which, you know, more than half of them were amazing, nice big berries, but then some of them were small and a little bit crumbly. So I know that next year I need to go in, thin them out, give them more fertilizer, probably a couple times in the season rather than just the ones, ones in the spring. Uh, and then I think I'm just gonna mow them all down this next year and not even mess with the June crop and just let them bear really heavy toward the end of the year. And I still have a lot like, I think we'll be harvesting all the way through mid-October. There's so many berries still left that are just little at this point still. So anyway, thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you're having a great day, and we'll see you in the next one. Bye.